Okay, origins of biodiversity. So evolution is the gradual change in genetic character of populations over many generations, achieved largely through the process of natural selection. Environmental change is going to give new challenges to species, and that's really the driver of uh, the evolution of diversity. Um, so a species overproduces, there's more individuals than they need, there's some variation amongst those individuals. Um, some of them can survive longer or better adapted, and so those ones that are better adapted tend to pass those traits on to their offspring. Um, and then there have been mass extinction events in the history of the world, um, usually about five or so mass extinctions. Uh, and then many people say that we're currently experiencing the sixth major, uh, major extinction. Um, so bio biodiversity arises from evolutionary processes. Um, and so there's variation amongst individuals. It arises randomly. Sometimes it makes them... Um, you know, more fit to survive. Other times it could impact their survival or it could have no impact at all. Um, so here we see some patterns um, that might not really have any impact on survival, um, that you can see how there's sort of variation based on the different population of giraffes that you're studying. Um, so natural selection happens with the following mechanism. Um, we have popula uh, population with genetic diversity or variation within it. Um, so mutations are what creates that genetic diversity, that variation. Um, some of these variations will make an organism more fit to survive. Others will make it less fit to survive. So individuals that are less fit will be selected against. Um, fitter individuals will have the opportunity to reproduce more successfully. And so they will pass on those mutations. Um, and then offspring of fitter individuals will inherit those genes and pass them on to their further generations. Um, so you can see this leading to an amazing diversity of life um, through evolution. Uh, a classic example would be um, different colored moths on trees. Um, so initially there were lighter moths and darker moths. The lighter moths would tend to blend in with the trees. Then there was an advent of um, soot and pollution from burning coal, um, which ended up making the trees a lot darker. And so all of a sudden it was harder to see the dark ones and easier to see the light ones. And so there was a selection uh, against white and for the dark species. And so that would change the population of the moths. Speciation is the actual formation of new species when populations become isolated and then evolve differently. Uh, so really cool example in Africa with all of these different lakes. Um, these lakes would fluctuate in water level. And so as they go up in water level, everything's connected. As they go down in water level, all of these fish become isolated. And when those fish are isolated, they're able to, to diverge genetically. Um, and then once they rejoin, they might become a different species. This is also what we saw happen uh, in the Galapagos. Uh, there was one species that landed um, and then that species went to different islands, became isolated on those different islands. Um, went into different niches, became isolated in those different niches. And so one species uh, ended up speciating into, oh, like what, there's like 14 or 18 different species of finches on the Galapagos now, all from one original founder population. Um, the isolation of populations is often from um, environmental barriers, um, like mountains are a big one, changes in rivers, um, sea level change or climate change or plate movements. Um, so the rivers form a really big barrier for um, like say monkeys in the Amazon rainforest who can't swim across the river. Um, so they get kind of trapped on these almost like islands, um, even though it's all um, in the rainforest, the rivers also almost create like little patches of forest. Um, and then tectonic plates um, in continental drift has led to a huge aspect of evolution. Um, so once upon a time, all of our continents were actually all connected together. Um, this would be uh, Gwan Gondwana land, I believe. Um, after Pangaea split, um, we had all the southern continents still connected. And then as they drifted apart, um, these groups of organisms would slowly change. So we have monkeys that were trapped in South America, which became the new world monkeys, and monkeys trapped in Africa became the old world monkeys. And then there was some marsupials in Australia, um, which broke off from the rest and were isolated to create all of the different marsupials you find in Australia today. Um, so you can see this is showing, uh, going backwards through time, how the continents have changed. Um, and so, yeah, this would be back during Pangaea, and then of course today, 
So looking, looking backwards, you can see how both the climate has changed, right? So more recently we had the ice age, that's when you see all the snow. And then when all the continents were in the middle here, it would have been very hot, very dry. And that's why you actually see huge layers of sandstone in the desert. That's all from the, the desert of those days. Um, here's just a brief overview of the mass extinctions of the past. Um, you don't have to know like specifically what the Permian extinction was compared to the Devonian, um, but you should be familiar with giant extinctions, what might cause them. Uh, so for example, changes in climate, asteroid impacts, um, changes in carbon dioxide or greenhouse gases, volcanic activity, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. So some example style questions, how does plate activity influence evolution? Um, so plates will affect climate as we get different ice ages or different um, really big continents usually have really dry areas. Um, we might have continents that become isolated. Um, so you'll see Australia will be isolated for most of its history out here. This is when all the marsupials were evolving, etc. Discuss some of the causes of mass extinctions. And once again, you can find the link to this in the description.